I had a, um, another question around humility. And this is one that's just been on my mind for some time. In the path of Bhakti Yoga, we are told never take offense, never take offense. And it's uh, taking offense in one sense is the product of the false ego. However, what I never really understood was that when we actually read Vedic literature, we see that pure devotees actually have taken offense. And in one sense, they're supposed to be the model citizen or role devotee of who we're supposed to follow. Uh, for example, the four Kumaras uh, taking offense when Jai and Vijay wouldn't let them into Vaikuntha and cursing them. And uh, even Bhima not wanting to lie down to the ground when the first Brahmastra was released during Kurukshetra, just out of pride that he was a warrior and he wouldn't back down, even though all the other warriors did. Uh, and even just the Leelas where Bhima out of pride and anger, um, got upset when there was uh, something in his way in the forest and later he realized it was the tale of Hanuman. Aren't these all examples of just the false ego kicking in and taking offense um, by pure devotees when they're supposed to be uh, model devotees for us to follow? We're told not to take offense, yet we see these pure devotees taking offense and perhaps not being humble. Do you mind explaining um, that? Yeah. So humility means to never seek revenge or never retaliate. Yeah, I would say that see, the Pandavas fought a war, but their primary purpose was not to take revenge. The primary purpose was to establish Dharma. So I think that there is a difference between you did this to me, so I'm going to do this to you. And you did this to me and that was wrong and that needs to be stopped. So we could say that what is the purpose of punishment? See, at the individual level, as devotees, it is best to be forgiving because in the world, we all hurt each other in so many ways. It's just inevitable. So to have a, uh, have a, to live with a purpose of getting even, that will get us at odds with ourselves. We will lose ourselves in the quest for revenge. So that's at an individual level. It's good to be forgiving. At the same time, we don't exist simply as individuals. We exist as parts of various wholes. So we may be part of a, of a community, an organization. And especially if we have some, some institutional powers. Say for example, um, at an individual level, if somebody does something to us, we, we, we may forgive them. But then there is a whole department for justice. If there are people who commit criminal activities and the police or the judges say, let's forgive them all. Well, if forgiveness or non-retaliation would be, were to be a, were to be made into an absolute virtue, then we would say that the, the justice department, the police department is all redundant. Let's just abolish it. But they, they do serve an important function. So generally, when punishment is given for some particular wrong action, especially some grievous wrong action, then it serves three distinct purposes. First is deterrence. You know, it sets an example for other people that if you do this, there are consequences. Don't do this. So society needs to know that actions have consequences. Secondly, it also serves a purpose of, uh, so it's deter deterring people in general from doing the same thing. Second is it also curbing that person from doing the same thing again. If a person can do something wrong and get away with it, and they get away with once, not with themselves, not just once, twice, thrice, but repeatedly, then that's dangerous. 
so that has to be taken care of and thirdly we also take the pain of that person seriously that's why the whole idea of instead of using the word revenge we could say we could use the word compensation now if if a thief has stolen say a million dollars from someone and would we just say that just just forgive it no million dollars is a big thing and uh, you have to if you have, if you have stolen that you will have to compensate for that so you said there can be compensation at a financial level and uh, that compensation indicates that we take that the, we acknowledge the seriousness of the loss that the person has suffered so similarly we although we cannot quantify in financial terms there could be physical pain or emotional pain that has been inflicted on someone and that has to be taken seriously so now at a when say a devotee is at the individual level dealing with others it's best to just forgive and move on with life but if forgiveness or just non retaliation is made into the supreme virtue then it can become a problem then it can facilitate people with parasitic or predatory motives if they are there they can grab power and they can abuse people through that power so there has to be a system of administration and that system of administration they can't be uncritically forgiving to the difference between uh, what arjuna wanted that i will not fight the war and that was a fair enough point but he that is a brahmanical virtue that if a person is individually insulted okay forgive them but arjuna was not some, not not a brahman he was a kshatriya he was he, may, he had a responsibility to maintain order in society and if he didn't do that what would happen duryodhana had been so brazen that he had attempted to disrupt draupadi in public and if he had unchallenged untrammeled power he would do similar heinous things more and more and that would be that would be disastrous for society so to stop duryodhana from doing those things to stop and to stop others from thinking that they could also do things like duryodhana did and get away with them there had to be some amount of discipline is required so i think there's a difference between a brahmanical mode of acting and a kshatriya mode of acting brahmanical mode of acting is non retaliation forgiveness as you have said and as devotees in general in our inter interactions we act in the mode of goodness and we are brahmanical in that sense but uh, otherwise we are also Uh, if if somebody is in a kshatriya role that means they are in an administrative position they have responsibilities uh, in that in that sense for the taking care of a broader community then they have to also do what it takes to protect that community so among the third of three factors taking a, ensuring that others don't imitate uh, ensuring that the same person the person doesn't continue or worsen and third is take the pain of the victim seriously uh, we might in non forgiving or in in non retaliating or forgiving we can wave off the third thing not take the pain seriously or rather just okay it happened but i am ready to move ahead with it but the first and second need to be taken seriously otherwise we can't move ahead with life uh, in a way that would be healthy in the long run for the building of a community Does it address your question? Yes, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.